Okay, so let's just start. And today I wanted to talk about four things. Um, and probably it's going to be the last stream I'm going to do about chat, I'm not sure. Again, maybe if something else interesting comes along, I'll do it. But at the moment, the things I would have to talk about are debugging, macros, <clears throat> context, which is something I'll explain later, and the whole build pipeline. So just starting with um, the debugging. <clears throat> so the other day, the other day, no, well, yes. <laughs> when I talked about in the other stream was that, you know, you can just, to debug this, you can just simply, um, when you build, you're going to get an EXE and a PDB. And you can just basically uh, connect with uh, Visual Studio, open Visual Studio, uh, the the EXE, and you can just put breakpoints and whatever you can debug it. It's it's pretty uh, simple. Uh, but today I want to show something more interesting. <clears throat> so, oh, and before I'm going to show something is that you know we showed enums I think last time. I'm not sure, but basically you have something like this. That's an enum. But they also have something that is like enum flags. And this is really cool because, again, it's one of those simple things that just help. Right? So basically, um, whenever you do something like this, um, you're going to be, um, it, it's going to define for you automatically the next flag. So it's just something that kind of helps, you know, when you have to to do some <coughs> some flags. Uh, opa. So let's just <coughs> okay. What did I do? Um, can you assign values to them manually? You can build them manually. So at the moment I'm not sure exactly <coughs> what's the, um, the code, but you can do, let's put it this way, you can do something, uh, the same kind of stuff that we were doing with that thing in, in Visual Studio, template 4, T4, whatever it was called. Right, that you kind of create this template and you can just make it generate all the code. <clears throat> you can do this here, and I think we even talked about this in the previous one, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure where. Was it in the data oriented? Mm -mm 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 -mm, complex types. <clears throat> so this, for example. So what you're doing here is just you're creating something so you just at compile time this so this is not run time okay this is all done at compile time it's going to you can do this so that it um, returns um, a text basically you need to return a string and you can just make the code so you could do something like this that basically will create the um, the enum if you would want right uh, but basically this does it like this, so then you can also override them, right? Because let's say you want to do this. But when you do it, it's going to complain that basically 8 is following something that was uh, not a, a single bit. So if you want to do something like this, you can, you know, you need to do like that. <clears throat> but it just basically helps a lot with, uh, you know, so that you, again, less error prone, right? Because it's it's super annoying because with enums it just goes one, two, three, but with flags it would also, if you want to do a bit mask, you would also have to do one, two, three, so you need to define them all, so it's, it gets pretty annoying. <clears throat> anyway, um, but that's not really what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> what I wanted to talk about is, so let's assume that we're going to have an if, uh, an if, sorry, a four, and then another four inside. <clears throat> and for now, let's just go print. Um, sorry. Um, 
you just go AJ and this basically is going to do this, right? <clears throat> so let's say now that we, we have an issue somewhere, right? And we know that it, whenever the i is free and j is zero, we know that we, we want to debug here some, for some reason. So there's this module that is included that at the moment only works for Windows and it's still not working very well, but it's helpful. And you can just say, well, whenever you want, you can just say, <clears throat> attach to debugger and then if you want to stop because um, if you don't if I don't put this here now the breakpoint it, it, it will ask to attach but then it just keeps going <clears throat> so if I have this now oh and also because again to debug you need to have um, the PDB right so we need to generate this right so we need to have a main function that's just going to call level one Let's remove this for now. So now when I run, when I uh, build, right, it builds the code. If I run it, <clears throat> it stopped there, right? Whenever it reached free, it stopped. And this popped up. So what this does is basically it goes to the just-in-time debugger of Visual Studio, this thing here. And now I can just say, okay, I want to debug this. And now Visual Studio is launching. <coughs> And basically, at the moment, it's not optimal in the sense that you're stopping inside the the breakpoint. But I think this will be, you know, sort of in the future, whenever these things will start doing something. But basically, you know, I can just step through the code, right? I can, you know, I can inspect here the things we're going to talk about this later, the context. But I can see the variables. This is the thing that I mentioned in the last stream that you don't really see s thirty s sixty four. You see like this underscore underscore in sixty four. And, and basically, yeah, you can step and you can debug, right? You can also, for example, put, uh, you know, breakpoints, right? And then if I continue, it stops there and this stuff. The dragging around doesn't work very well. Let me just try. Maybe it'll work. So sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I, I haven't been having that much experience dragging this around in, in, in C++. In Visual, in C Sharp, it works pretty good, but in, maybe it's just can also work badly in C++. I have no idea. But sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and basically, this is it. Like it helps a lot in terms of uh, well, because now we hit it again. It helps a lot in terms of just being able to debug something because, especially when you're overriding memory and you're doing stuff like that, you know, sometimes it's just helpful that you can just go there and you can just check what's happening. And you can inspect everything. Maybe let me see if I put here. Um, so let's see. Uh, um, I'm going to go like just for simplicity. Again, the Visual Studio thing pops up. Now it's launching again because I closed it. Uh, so M, you have it here, right? And you have like, you know, you have the int and you have the string that has a low and whatever. All right, so it's, it's pretty, I would say it's pretty decent for a language is just starting. Um, but again, I, this is only Windows. I don't think there's anything for like Linux or, or Mac OS, but we'll see. I'm not sure how, you know, uh, how those environments are, to be honest, these days. Uh, but yeah, basically, this is the first thing I wanted to talk about. And just how, it easy, how it's easy to, to debug whenever you need to. Do you guys have any questions about this stuff?
No questions.